I'm Farnoosh Tarabi. I'm honored to be here at the very first ever Blogger Health event. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I've already spoken to many of you throughout the day at our Chase Slate booth about how you choose to live life well on your terms. And one obvious but simple way to live life well is to fuel your passion. And my passion, nerdily enough, is personal finance. Early on, I discovered that when you have control of your finances, you have control of your life. And that is incredibly liberating. You have to be your biggest advocate when it comes to pretty much anything in life, but especially your personal finances. And I think if you can take on that mindset, it's incredibly empowering. Finances without a debt are impacting our overall well-being. We're not able to sleep at night when we have debt. We might be getting into arguments with our loved ones around money. And Blogger Health actually did a survey finding that 94% Almost everybody said their well-being is directly connected to their financial health. How many of you would say that that sometimes impacts you? Yes. It's, it does not discriminate, right? Money problems, we all have them to some extent. 50% said that they have actually experienced health issues due to financial stress. If you are someone who feels like you're overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, I would just say, or if you feel like you know, you've made mistakes and you can't get over them, forgive yourself, okay? It's easy to create a personal narrative, and I hear it all the time, and I've been guilty of this myself at one point in my life, that I'm not good about money. I'm not good with money. I'm, this is too hard. It's too complicated. I don't have the time. Um, this is a real roadblock to progress. And I don't know, but I can't say for certainty, but I do feel like I run into more women who who harbor these insecurities around money, and it's unfounded. It's just a story we've somehow picked up along the way, and it's absolutely false. There's also power in reverse engineering. So here's another tip. When you're trying to figure out how to get yourself to a better place financially, discover your why first. Why are you doing this? To save just to save, to get out of debt just to get out of debt, that wouldn't be motivation enough for me. I need a carrot. I need to know that there is something beautiful at the end of this that I can really appreciate that will fulfill me. Is it that you want to start that business, buy that home, start that family? All those goals carry price tags. All those whys carry price tags. Figure out what that cost is and reverse engineer by going month to month until you reach that goal. And then finally, find a supportive community around this goal of becoming financially healthy. Everybody in this room, we're a community. You know, if there's nothing I've learned about personal finance and building your wealth and learning about money is that you can't no do it all on your own. And we don't have all the answers in a silo. We have to ask questions. We have to get vulnerable, talk to our friends, talk to our partners about money. And through that, we can, we can grow. So just like with your health, it's important to know your weight and your BMI and your blood pressure. In the financial world, scores are also a big part of getting healthy. And one of the most important scores is your credit score. Knowing your credit score helps you assess where you stand financially and how close or far away you are from achieving your goals. And there are, are a few tried and true habits of people with a healthy credit score. One is they check their scores well and often. I do this through my Chase app, Chase Slate offers free FICO credit scores every month to their users. They also have credit cards. They're not people who just live on a cash basis. You have to have credit to build credit. People with high credit scores also pay their bills on time every month. They automate those payments. It's a big part of your credit score calculation. And then they avoid maxing out their cards. Now before I end, a few more words of financial support if you need it. And if you feel overwhelmed, I want to tell you that you don't have to do everything today. You might have a really long list of financial to-dos. Save more, invest better, buy the house. You don't have to do it all. Maybe just pay your bills on time. That would be good. But think of this as a layering process. Baby steps, create a timeline, um, set mini goals, and reward yourself along the way. Finally, 
when you are evaluating your personal finances that you don't get discouraged, you don't get frustrated. Find those little moments of celebration. When you finally hit that savings target for the month, this may sound counterintuitive, treat yourself. Do something fun with that little bit of savings if it is going to encourage you to keep on the right path.